so we've made all our bob weights up. Um, this is a bob weight. Um, we had to make all these up to 742.6, so we've done that. That's how we've added the weights evenly from side to side. Uh, so now what we're going to do is bolt it onto the crank, which is uh, sitting on the digital balance here. We've got the crank up here. Once we've got it up here, we put our, our debris wheel on, which mainly tells us the degrees uh, that it's spinning. So when it, when it gives us a reading later on, we can see uh, it'll tell us where it's out, at what degree, and we'll be able to spin it to that location. So that has to be nice and central, uh, so it doesn't put the balance out. So all we need to do is get it on top dead center, uh, by eye, which is simply just looking down the keyway. And once that's done, we bolt our bob weights on. Now the bob weights have to sit square and central to the journal. Since these journals are so narrow, it's easy to sit them in the middle because it's not far from the loop to start with. But what we need to do is have a level. So uh, each one is a square to the next. Right, so once we've done them up evenly, we turn this around. And what this is tell us, if we look over there on the screen, you can see by spinning that that that's the degree we're moving, trying to see the circulation. Now in this there's 60 degrees in a full circle, so every degree is six real degrees. Um, we don't need to do every degree because it's uh, find our location just by working out every one degree out of six, that's fine. So what we've done on the screen, I'll show you again that we've had a top dead cinema. Our top dead center is 60. So we've got a full rotation of the crank which will bring it back around to the top dead center around to there. Which if we look over here, this is where our bob weight is, right on top. So what we do then is spin around to the next journal, which these, these journals have a 10 degree separation, so, or a 60 degree separation, so if we look on there, we're around to 50 now. Um, so that's gone, gone around 10 degrees. So that's where we bolt on our next bob way. So we always make sure our journals are clean, bob weights are clean, so there's going to be any scratches when you take it all up. Extremely accurate and extremely sensitive as we'll see as we do our readouts later on. So just come out to the last one now. Alright, so all our bob weights are on. Straps on, which just hold the oil on the main as it's spinning around. Let's get the right soft belt, and then we, this is the belt that's uh, driven by the motor that's down here, and that's simply how it's spun up by this motor that's down below. All we have to do now is put the information in the computer of the dimensions of the crank, uh, so it gives us a readout that suits the machining points that we want to get a readout on, which generally is your front web and your rear web, where we want to machine from. So, we'll go over to the screen here, and we'll go into setup. Alright, so we'll look at our, what it's going to ask us, it's a few things, a few measurements. So our left plane is basically uh, from our first leg into the, where we're going to be wanting a readout from, so 25mm, it's actually already in there, a left radius, uh, which is going from the centre of the crank, uh, which is 90mm, a distance between the bearings, uh, which is basically from your two stands, your two Vs here, which is 350mm. right side as well, it'll tell us, and ask us, uh, again, we'll probably get 25 mil, which it is, and uh, 90 mil again, the same as the front, and then the main 
So therefore it knows what to spin the crank up that way for the belt. Going off that main journal. Right, it'll also ask us what drill size we think we might use. Now going off the width of that web, I'll, I'll leave it as a 14mm. The web's about 16 or 17mm. Actually, sorry, it's about 22mm. So we'll leave it at 14 for the moment. Uh, factor 1 is just the weight, so it's uh, in that factor there. Uh, and that's it. Alright, so all we need to do now is basically spin it up see what we got. Now what, what it, the balancer does, it, it spins up in between 490 RPM and 510 RPM and it won't go past there if the crank is out more than 20 grams. So once the computer reads that if it is under 20 grams it's safe to spin up further as a safety regulation. So it'll, it'll go up and spin in between uh, 730 to 770 RPM. And that's all it needs to spin up. Um, it doesn't need to, a lot of people ask, um, can you spin it up at 2,000 or 3,000 revs? Um, which is no point. Um, once you've got it down to zero balance, um, it, what, it, what's balanced is balanced. It's not going to uh, create a different figure or readout once you're on zero point to start with. If it was out 10 grams at either end and you did spin it up faster, you would get a larger readout because you'd be, you'd be creating throw the faster you got with the weight that it's out. But once it's zero, it's zero. So there's no point in going any faster. All right, so we're going to spin it up. We're just going to give it a little trial first. Make sure it's out of the way. And once it is, we'll start. Okay, so it's going to spin up. It's going to read up to, it will creep up the first time um, to 490 to 510 RPM. Which if you look on the screen, you can see it's slowly creeping up now. It's at 491 RPM. So it's starting to read. It'll sit around there, and that's its reading now. Alright, so what it's telling us is that. I'll spin this back around to the first, this, this being the front of the crank, the left side. At that point there, it's out 24.5 grams. And at the back of the crank, where we indicated the measurements from the web, it's out 24.8 grams. So, it's out a fair bit, so we're going to have to do a little bit of machining. So, at the back where we're sitting right now, that's where it's going to have to be machined. So we're going to have to drill a hole there. Um, and also, when it's around the other side, we're going to have to drill a hole there. So we'll do that and then um, we'll do another spinner after we're finished. Alright, so what we've done, we've drilled the front side. Uh, the reason behind showing the diameter of the drill before is that we can press this amount button. And it says at that point there, with the 14mm drill that we ended in earlier, 20.5mm deep, at the back 20.7mm deep. It's only a rough guide, but um, gives us an idea, so we're not here all day. Um, there's a lot of other factors that come into it with dynamic balancing. It's not like static balancing, where it's like a balancing a, a wheel or a, or a flywheel or something like that. Uh, one side will affect the other side, um, depending on the positioning. Like these are opposite each other, very close. So taking off 20 mil off both sides um, will make the other side less effective so we will have to take off more probably. So I'll leave it at that for the moment. This is what's happened over here. So I've drilled a hole here. I've also drilled into an existing hole that was already there and just made it a touch deeper. Alright, so we can only go so deep um, because the deeper you go, the closer it gets to the centre and therefore less effect you'll have once you go too close to the centre. So what we're going to do now is uh, re-spin it back up and uh, see what we got. And hopefully it'll, it'll go over the 490 to 510 mark this time because uh, we'll just over there. 